Yeah, welcome back everyone to the lecture two. So in this lecture, uh, we are going to see some more details of uh, uh, of the simple computer design. Okay. So in the previous lecture, I will just remind you. Okay. Uh, as I have said, in order for computer to support a particular operation, you need to have hardware for that particular operation. And then we have to discuss how this hardware was later on automated. So it was replaced by electronic switches. Uh, which was controlled by flip flops. So, set of this flip flop was called as a register, which is called as an instruction register. And whatever code you write in register, appropriate hardware will be enabled. So, if you write this code 100, then adder is enabled. Then, whatever numbers you supplied here will be added, and you'll be getting the result. Similarly, if you want subtraction, you write one, remaining all of them are zero. So, this is one thing which we have seen earlier in the previous video. But the problem with this particular approach is here. We are selecting, in the, we have assumed that in the memory the codes are written and control unit is simply reading the codes and writing into instruction register. So with that, with that you will be able to select one of the operation, one of the hardware, you will be able to enable one of the hardware but the problem is you will not be able to change the operands. We did not discuss about the operands in the previous video. It was assumed that the operands are automatically changed but even uh, if you want the complete thing to be automated then uh, even uh, you need to take about, take care of the operands as well. So in this video we are going to see how uh, a computer which can not only select a particular operation but also select a particular operands can be designed. So in order to do that, so first uh, what actually happens is what actually the computer can do. So yesterday what we have seen, that means in the previous video what we have seen was a too simplistic view of uh, microprocessor. So when you talk about a real microprocessor, so your real, uh, that means we want to make the microprocessor more perfect. So this microprocessor along with this hardware, so, so on, whatever the hardware you want, you can include. So there should be some path for the data. So this thing we have seen, so two operands needs to be supplied. So there are two buses, one bus for operand one and other ones for operand two, okay. And there is ultimately this ALU is going to give you result and the result is going to come on a third bus which you call it as result bus. So now if I want to completely automate the process, uh, one thing what I can do is I can have registers. I can supply the buses with the value contained in this register. Okay, let me take two temporary registers, temporary A and temporary B. Okay. So now whatever value I store in this register that will be available to my hardware. And this part, you know this part we have already discussed what operation is selected out of the hardware that depends on the instruction register. Okay, different flip flops of, inst flip -flops of instruction register are controlling different hardwares. Okay, this part uh, we have already seen. So if I want addition, I will be simply writing one there and remaining all of them zeros like this. Assume, let us assume the size of this uh, register is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now if I want to completely automate my process, then in the memory, assume this is your memory, you, in the memory you need not, not only you, you should store the code for addition, but also the operands. Let us say if I want to add 3 plus 4, then I want to subtract, subtract 7 and 6. Okay, so then I need to write uh, the code, addition code, one for addition, then operands three. So three, it, by, let us assume these registers are eight bit, so I need to write eight bit value. So three is represented as zeros, zero, zero, one, one, and then four is represented as zeros, zero, one, zero, zero. This is my first instruction, which says add three comma four. And then the next instruction, which is subtract 7, 6 needs to be stored in the memory like I want subtraction, so therefore this bit should be 1, remaining all the zeros, then the number 7, 7 coded in binary, so it will be 1, 1, 1, and then 6 coded in binary, 0, 1, 1, 0, right. So now, uh, there is something which is going to differ now. Now, the design of your control unit is going to change. Now you should design your control unit such that it reads this instruction 
and after reading this instruction it separates what should go here and what should go here and what should go that means it should separate this 1000 okay this one followed by four zeros and give it to the instruction register and then it should be able to separate the other operand which is your 00 0011 and it should be able to give this to your A register similarly 